Feynman diagram. Feynman diagram. Feynman diagram. Yeah. Man, you know, what are you going to do? It's with a, this? It was a good shot, though. Yeah, I'm trying. R I can't. Richard Feynman. I can't read. Richard Feynman, he's a, uh, he's a, oh, uh, Nobel Prize winning physicist. Worked on the Science bombs, doesn't interest stuff. me. That's okay. God did it. <laughs> a, a wizard <laughs> in, did in it. A wizard did it. <laughs> 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 and that's and that's his voice that you hear at the beginning and in the middle of that track, which I t totally ripped off a video from YouTube, but that's a whole other story. Mm -hmm. Theft. <coughs> Theft. One Wayness. I am Michael. This is Face Cookies on 90.5 WERG in studio with Adam Holquist. One Wayness and Lifeless. Liz Vickery. Liz Transmits and all the other cool things that she does. She, they will be uh, doing a little piece later together. But first, we're going to get into some uh, some one wayness. You have a, a pretty sweet little setup in the studio. Yeah, I brought a little sort of portable version of some of my toys. Um, it's just like an assortment. It's he's just got a table out with an assortment of uh, you know, it, buttons yeah. and pedals. I have uh, I have my mono tribe, which is a little synth, and my chaos later, which is another little touchpad synth, and I've got my phone, which I have some some weirdness streaming off of, and I'm going to just do a little. Uh, a little improv kind of thing with uh, this stuff that I brought. Very cool. Here's some Adam Hopeless one wayness. Improv. <laughs>
<laughs> Thanks. Nice. One Wayne is Adam Holquist in the studio doing a little improv stuff on all his toys. That uh, ambient electronic thing. I, that wasn't really so ambient. That was really yeah, kind of really kind of noisy and, and and irritating. But <laughs> <coughs> is that where you're at right now? You're um, just a noisy, irritated mood. I yeah, I guess so. Um, you know. It, what I do and how it sounds sort of depends on what I bring with me. You know, the the live rig that I'm using for the show on Saturday and for when I play out and stuff right now has a lot more stuff than this. It's got my Obviously. it's got my laptop that I do a lot of looping on and a lot of processing of um, you know quote unquote real instruments and playing um, some bass and a lot of lap steel actually. And uh, I got this this funky old retro '70s organ for Christmas. Uh, it's a little reed organ, it's, so it's just got a motor that blows air across reeds, right. and it sounds um, sort of like a wheezy old accordion. And I'm running nice. that through, um, basically through like a guitar signal chain, and uh, running that through my laptop, and looping that through my laptop, and uh, making some making some sounds with that, and uh, using a lot of a lot of spoken word samples and uh, field recordings, and um, throwing a whole bunch of stuff into it, but. Yeah, this particular uh, thing that I brought with me today sort of lends itself to um, sort of aggressive sequenced stuff like what I just did. So that's what I just did just now. Do you uh, do you hear the music differently when you do it like that? Do you um, is there a different feel to the art of doing that rather than just say straight up playing bass with a band in a you know in a musical setting? Oh, or do yeah. you find it in a you know, oh, it's all just music. And well, I mean, it is all just music, but you know, it's it's sort of. Um, I guess there's something different about playing an instrument that that you know versus playing an instrument that you're sort of exploring. Um, you know, bass bass is sort of my native instrument, and I've been playing bass for uh, 15, 17 years, something like that. So, the bass I can just sort of almost sort of shut myself off and just play bass if that's you know what the occasion calls for um but you know doing stuff like this it's uh it keeps all my hands and feet and brain parts busy uh just because you know there's there's so much that i'm trying to keep under control and to keep going the way that i want it to go um which you know i think Sometimes people hear the phrase electronic music and they they get the idea or the mental picture of um, you know a, a dude just hitting play on a laptop. Mm, right. And you know there's there's a, a few components of what I do here and there that that is me hitting play on a laptop, but it's me hitting play on a spoken word sample on my laptop while I'm you know playing keyboards with my left hand and you know. Put the smack on something else with my right hand. You know, it's a lot more. <laughs> what I do, you know, is a lot more um, performance oriented. A lot more of me actually playing things and doing it live than um, just a lot of pressing buttons. Than a lot of pressing buttons and and making it sound just like it sounded on the record. Which um, you know, it's been sort of interesting. The uh, the album that I brought out back in September, Blue Stars Freezing. Um, that was all sort of obviously made in the studio and sort of crafted one layer at a time. And uh, at the time I started it, at least, I didn't really have a whole lot of idea that I would eventually be coming out and trying to play some of the stuff live. So I didn't really, um, you know, that wasn't really a consideration of, oh, I only have two hands and I only have two feet and, you know, I can only do so many things at once. So there's, there's stuff on there that I will probably never play live or never play live in a way that sounds like it sounds on the album and there's stuff that you know I've gone back and learned and there's stuff that I've that was an improv in the first place that I've had to go back and sort of transcribe and reteach yeah. myself and break it down <laughs> and figure out okay what did I do there and you know how can I do this in a way that it's recognizably the 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 thing that people know it as